So please help me welcome all of our students. Thanks very much, Ken. And, and let me tell you how I feel. So we started the day by, by hearing that we're almost uh, going to go up by 2% Celsius and all this stuff that's going to happen you know, if we don't curb our, our emissions and design better products and, and do all the things we want to do. And then we heard that there's a lot of great tools out there to go ahead and do it, and, and we could just get right into it and, and, and really start making a difference. And then we heard that we could do our supply chain better, and then we heard there's all these ideas and processes. So now it's like, okay, so what are you guys actually doing? Okay, so this is, uh, you know, some of what I want to talk to you about today. And, and, uh, and, and I'm sure Brad didn't set it up on purpose. And I'm sure that didn't happen either. But uh, I, I want to talk to you about some of our thinking around that and, and give you a, a perspective uh, really where, where the rubber meets the road, no, no pun intended, of what does it actually take from our perspective to be successful in integrating all these great ideas into a practice in, in a place like, uh, like Ford. So when we're, we're talking about, as, and, I, and I won't belabor this slide, but really we talk a lot about life cycle assessment and a life cycle view, so I won't, I won't talk about that, but we really share that, that view and we feel that that is, is really the correct way to look at it, to look at things from uh, you know, primarily product and the impact of the product uh, on the environment overall through its life cycle as well as uh, the processes. Okay, so if you look at the environment, and, and a lot of what we traditionally did at Ford is driven by regulation, okay, and we'll talk about how we want to start changing that mindset, but, but to give you sort of like how uh, we give you a couple of slides on how we view this from a, a real business perspective. So a lot of uh, the regulations that, that we see really came out as a result of what we call externalities, where the resources that get consumed by a company really aren't fully accounted for, aren't paid for, and we'll talk about how that cycle evolves, but government eventually picks up on that and, and regulations come out to compensate for that, okay? Uh, the, other, can, the other kind of batch of regulations that, that started in the mid-80s and onwards were around material usage, uh, all the toxicity consideration, things like that, a lot of material databases spun up as a result of that. And then finally, we're starting to see uh, regulations around transparency, regulations around labeling and stuff like that. So there's a lot of these different kind of regulations coming in uh, from, from different areas. And really, uh, uh, this kind of summarizes how, how this happens. So when we engage in a business activity, we don't really fully understand uh, that there are externalities when we start consuming resources or, or, or things like that. It takes several years, many years, sometimes decades, for, for these externalities to become noticed and manifest. So in, in a sense, uh, we need a way to get ahead of that curve, okay? I mean, that's a, that's a real problem that uh, businesses face as, and, and companies like Ford in, in particular. From the point of view of information, because you know, this is the, the conference on the future of engineering uh, systems or software, uh, it's really about how can information help address these problems. The way we think of our, if you look at our current framework, it's, it's very much a reactive framework. We react to regulation, okay? Regulation comes out, it could be invariably it involves some form of reporting, some form of looking at information in the company and making an assessment ba based on that. And our current framework is very much reactive, okay? When the regulation comes out, we need to figure out how to respond to it. We sometimes will spin off new information solutions to address that regulation. And in a sense, we're always uh, behind the curve on, on multiple levels, not the least of which it makes it very hard to assess our upcoming products in view of these uh, regulations. And really what we want to get to is a proactive framework, okay? And, and we heard kind of different people talking about this in different ways, but it's a framework that enables us, as we make our decisions both on product and our process, to understand uh, the full life cycle assessment. But you have to remember that we come from a lot, we have a lot of assets, 
okay, that represents that uh, proactive, that reactive point of view. And if you look at our challenges, the challenges we have today, we have uh, uh, in, in particular in IT environment, we have several uh, types of, of challenges. The first is it's, uh, things are reactive, okay, so we only, you know, start acting upon uh, regulations coming out. Uh, the solutions are replicated. Often what you see is there's all the information is available in our core, either transactional systems or design systems, but for the purpose of regulatory assessment or regulatory compliance, we need to copy it into a special purpose system, do the life cycle assessment, environmental compliance, regulatory reporting, whatever you want to call, what are we going to call the functionality, whatever you call the analytics functionality in this replicated environment and then report from that. That, that, is, that results in cost, that results in data that's not reconciled, that's a problem. Uh, the other is, is uh, you know, the nature of, of the analytics and the reporting today are very much tied together, okay? So what you find when you go, especially around the world, and we operate everywhere pretty much in the world, is you find that the underlying analytics are pretty much the same or very similar in different classes of regulations, but because of the way the software gets packaged and implemented, there's a lot of duplication of the same set of analytics. And then finally, the data collection is non-standardized. There's a lot of point-to-point -point integrations in order to get the complete data set required to comply with the regulation. So it's a, so as the amount of regulation goes, you know, increases and, and the scope and the interconnected, you can kind of see this thing growing and mushrooming and, and really becoming something that, that uh, is really not very scalable or sustainable from an information point of view. And it's just not, uh, it definitely has an issue. Okay, so what is our concept for a solution? Okay, and we're gonna kind of float a new idea here um, to, to kind of give you a sense of, of what we're thinking. We, we think that what we really need is to start looking at information standards around plant and pro around process and product in such a way that, that uh, you'll see in a minute sta sort of like separates, if you will, the product data world, product and process, the whole enterprise data from the, if you will, environmental or life cycle analytics, okay? And also a lot of what we, 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 we see in the marketplace is, is coupled, okay? A coupling of product data and analytics, and we're talking about how can we separate those, okay? And, in a, and it'll become clear why that separation is very important for scalability in the enterprise. Um, so what would a standard like this look like? Well, it's basically a standard that allows you to go into your enterprise data and extract from it the elements that you need for sustainability and environmental reporting. So here's sort of like a mock-up of what this may look like. So you want to look at what you have, you know, in the company, things like plant, final product, supply chain, end of life, and maybe other considerations. You want to be able to drill down. What are the things you care about in the plant? Things like material usage, hazardous, non-hazardous, energy consumption, water consumption. You want standardized ways to extract this from enterprise data. You may need another layer of what specific aspects you're trying to get out of this and, and uh, you know, what exactly about it you want to report. So there's a standard to structure here, and it's, you know, this is not meant to be a proposal, but, but a concept, okay? So we have this kind of standard. And really the idea is, 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 is pretty simple, is to have all our enterprise product and process backend systems, okay, be able to have information extracted from them with, by means of the standard and then be able to have a single set of sustainability analytics that works off of the standard and it can connect to any one of our systems, okay? We, we don't want to have one set of solutions for the product design phase and another set of solutions for the manufacture, for the, you know, reporting phase, when in fact we want those to have the same set of analytics. But that data resides in two different systems. So how do you solve that? How do you get the same set of analytics to work off different data sources in the enterprise? 
right? That's really the problem uh, that we need to that we need to solve. And by having this kind of architecture, okay, we feel uh, is is the right approach because we know we're not looking for yet another new tool, okay, uh, that will kind of integrate everything because frankly. Uh, our experience shows that vendors, you know, that's not their capability to develop those kinds of tools at the scale that we need it. But we have been successful in getting vendors, well, in certain cases to, you know, work with information standards, not ISO perhaps, but, but de facto industry standards. And that's what, uh, what we feel is really required to kind of open up the space and, and really open the value of all the information that we have in our back end to this new kind of analytics that, uh, that is required for this life cycle assessment. And if we go to this model, we really solve a lot of our problems. We solve the duplication model. We don't need to get it all into one big tool. We have true life cycle assessment because we'll be able to use the same set of analytics in product design as we would do in sort of like the manufactured product, which eventually is what we need to report out will reduce the cost of compliance because when a new regulation comes out, we don't need to go scramble in our backend system and figure out where is what and what information should we take. We've got this standardized interface against, and we've got all this you know, available analytics already and we could you know, compose the report by just connecting the right analytics to the right sources, packaging in the right format that the agency requires and, and solve that problem. And we'll standardize We'll standardize the data collection for the purpose of environmental assessment throughout the enterprise. And, and uh, so that's really one of the reasons we're here and interested in this, uh, in this uh, uh, symposium day is because we feel that we as an industry need to come together to really work on, on these kinds of uh, scalable and uh, sustainable from an enterprise point of view solutions. That's it. Thank you very much. One of the questions I have is to what degree did Michael's presentation be interesting? Do you use life cycle inventory information? And is that something you're looking for? In our supply chain? We are absolutely interested in being able to assess uh, you know, the environmental impact of our supply chain decisions. But if you look at our, at our, at what does that mean? What do we need, you know, to, to do that successfully? And the amount of information that, that we need to do that, you know, with the largest ERP system in the world with 170 plants globally. For us, being able to consistently manage and extract that information, you know, is what, it, what it's all about because you know, we can do a, a terrific job optimizing our, you know, small car in India, okay? But that's like, you know, wh whatever it is, X number of percent of the volume. And we don't, we really want solutions, we, we try to go for solutions that's, that we know will scale to the global scale that we need to. We're not so much project uh, focused. Well, I, I, think, I think the standard that we need in this space is one level below that, okay, or, or one level more granular. It is, what are the questions you want to know? What do you need to know about a workstation? Well, it really boils down to what do you need to know about, the work sta about a workstation in a plant so that you can roll up, you know, an environmental assessment. Now, now the, the W3 standards provide a lot of, if you will, the transport mechanism to codify that, but it doesn't say that, right? Uh, one comment and then a question. So it, actually, our database started with a meeting at Ford Motor Company um, nine years ago by John Sullivan. John Sullivan. Yes. From service, yeah. Um, so on these information standards, are you, what, I mean, how do you develop those? Or do you have those now? Or who are you working with on that? Or is there what more work is there? Yeah, we don't have them right now. Uh, you know, we presented this at, at a conference in NIST, 
You know, we, we feel we can, we're not in a position to, I would say, lead the creation of this kind of a standard. You know, I think we need, you know, vendors, we need government, we need, you know, people to take a stand and say we need to work on these kinds of standards as, as an industry. And anybody here who wants to do that, we're very interested in having that discussion. But, you know, that's really not our role to, to, to formulate the standard. Mike, okay. to answer your question, we are building the standard today, which are for our already the production we have today. Like, for example, our bill of material or our configuration. This is a little bit over our capabilities today. So yeah. we need help. I, I mean, I think this is really a foundation when we're talking about creating data systems that are living and moving and, you know, because what we have now in our database is very static and we did it once and then we're done. But something like this is really a good basis for... Uh, yeah. Well, we had a discussion about how we can leverage, you know, uh, your, your database and, and work, you know, because I, I think what you have in your database is, is valuable, you know, if we took it to the next level in our industry, right? If you had, for example, this kind of a standard, right? You, you could say, you know, <coughs> what's the best practice for a welding station? What's the environmental footprint of a welding station? We can, like, benchmark ourselves compared to our competitors and, and sort of, like, understand where we stand and what the opportunities for improvement are. That's why... I asked you the question of the granularity of your data sets, you know, because that's exactly what, what it gets to. You know, you need to identify the right elements around which you, you can start collecting data, and those are the elements that you build the standard around also. Yeah, we should talk, yeah. Um. How do you come to grips with the fact that you have different government agencies giving you conflicting well, the way, the way, uh, so uh, the situation today is sad, you know, because we don't have a central way to reconcile it. So we will, you know, develop a solution, you know, like somebody in Europe comes up with a regulation and we'll have to develop some solution for that or somebody in Australia. What we really, and all those solutions, all what those solutions will do, they will on a point-to-point -point basis go back to the back-end data, extract that, pack, do some analytics on it, and report it, right? So lacking this standard, you know, is, it makes our life more complicated. And, and, you know, and we may eventually develop some variant of that for our internal consumption just to simplify our compliance costs. But we really would like it to be an industry standard. Yeah. I'm, you talked about... Uh, that you're not in the business of developing new standards and you feel that uh, the industry soft developers and such need to. Uh, have you developed a, an ontology and a taxonomy for these standards that, uh, that they can built, be built upon? Or who has developed that taxonomy? So what we did is we, we have a concept for what that would look like. We have a concept for, for what that would look like and you know, I, I think we're kind of feeling it out, how much of this we should do ourselves, how much we should do it in partnership. We don't have a complete taxonomy. We have a concept right now. Yeah. Where would you fit um, the IMDX system into that framework? Is it back end? Is it a standard? Is it a little of both? Or is it even below the map? You're talking about the material database? Yeah. The material database you know, in and of itself is, is really part of the analytics, right? Because out of your back-end system, you would take what is the material, right? Like the characterization of the material, but where it ranks in, you know, the world of hazardous material or controlled materials or whatever, that's really part of your analytics, okay? Which, by the way, speaks to why you want to have a single set of analytics for the enterprise, okay? Because when you think about it, in a company like Ford, the product development organization is a very big organization that, you know, will work to, uh, I have to say the word requirements, okay, we said not to say it, but let me just say to requirements around, you know, uh, materials, right? 
and reporting really happens out of a different function, okay? And, and you really, you know, if you have two separate sets of analytics, you know, you're really not, you, you've created just, you know, uh, non-value add, right? You really want a single set of analytics that serves both the design function and the reporting function. And that's where the material database should be. We're going to have to uh, hold the rest of the questions until after we're done. I want to thank you, but can you leave this slide up here? Sure. Because it's yeah, a perfect segue to what we need to do. <coughs> so let's thank you all. Thank you.